what's up guys, it's Kelly and today I'm sharing my TBR for the Believe Fun. If you find yourself enjoying this video then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, it really helps me out and if you're new here and would like to see more of me then please subscribe. So the Believe-a-thon is a two-week readathon happening in May hosted by Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. It's running from the 11th to the 24th. Basically the idea is that you are working your way through this magical kingdom as you read books. So he's created this gorgeous map and you make your way through the map doing challenges along the way until you ultimately reach the bookkeeper's stronghold. You can make this as easy or as difficult as you want to, basically to get from the pocket poachers in to the bookkeeper's stronghold on a normal route where you go from place to place to place should take you five books but you can also do it in two or you can choose to not do it as a journey and just do all 11 prompts. It's entirely up to you. I have chosen the five book approach which I think is a little bit ambitious because I am expecting to be back at work by the time the Believeathon starts so <laughs> probably not going to be able to read five books in two weeks but we shall see. I have a backup plan in case though but let me not ramble too much more and let's get into the challenge. So everyone on the 11th of May is going to start off at the Pocket Poachers Inn. So as you're sitting there drinking your mug of speckled pig, a dark figure approaches you. He knows your name and he knows about your adventures last November traversing the land of make believe -athon. Now he needs your help. An evil witch has cast a spell on the bookkeeper's stronghold, so books are trapped to everyone but you. As a result, the people in the land of make believe are starting to lose their imagination and you are the only person with the strength and courage to embark on this quest. So to do that, you have to read the first book in a series. I have gone with Tilly and the Book Wanderers, the first book in the Pages and Co series. I've wanted to read this for such a long time. And this is about a girl called Tilly, whose mother has disappeared and she now lives with her grandparents in their bookshop, well, above their bookshop. One day her favourite book characters appear in the shop and I know one of them is Alice in Wonderland and she discovers that she can enter the books with them and that through this skill of book wandering she might be able to find out what happened to her mother. It sounds like it's going to be sad, I'm definitely expecting it to be sad, but also really whimsical and wonderful. I think I'll really enjoy this because I think that child me would really have related to Tilly. I mean I probably still will now, let's be honest, all of us would still love to follow our favourite characters into their books as long as we were somehow protected because I would not last five minutes in many of the books that I enjoy. As you agree to undertake the stranger's quest he hands you a magic lamp. The lamp can grant you one of three wishes at any point on your journey. Your options are to skip to any location on the path, to transport to a different next location on the path, and to transport to the bookkeeper's stronghold. Now I'm going to choose to transport to the bookkeeper's stronghold so that even if I fail my TBR and I only read like one or two books, no matter how far I've got, I can transport to the bookkeeper's stronghold a couple of days before the end of the Believeathon and read my final book so that I can still pass. This is what I meant when I said you can make it as easy or as difficult as you want to. Basically, you only have to read the first book in a series and then you can use your magic lamp to transport yourself to the bookkeeper's stronghold and there you can complete that prompt or you can follow the whole path. So now you're ready to go on your adventure and you have to choose your next location. Your choices are the Yellow Brick Road, Baba Yeager's house and the Wonderfalls. I'm choosing to head down the Yellow Brick Road and as I'm following it I meet the Wicked Witch of the West. She starts to cast a spell on me that causes me to fall asleep. And the only way to fight it is to read a book that I should have read years ago. And for that I'm choosing The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valenti. When I say I should have read this book years ago, I don't just mean I've had it for a long time. I mean I have put this on I think like two or three TBRs over the years and I've still never read it. This sounds really charming, it looks really beautiful, it has stunning illustrations inside, and it obviously has dragons, so Obviously I'm keen, but I want to read the jacket to you because it sounds just lovely. September is a girl who longs for adventure. When she's invited to the fairyland by a green wind and a leopard, well of course she accepts, wouldn't you? But fairyland is in turmoil and it will take one 12 year old girl, a book loving dragon, and a strange and almost human boy named Saturday to vanquish an evil Marquess and restore order. 
Not since Oz has there been a land or a cast of characters so rich and entrancing. Sounds like I would love it. I really think I'm going to just for whatever reason, it's been sitting on top of my bookcase for years. Having woken up, I summon water to melt the witch, and I can choose to go to the Hundred Acre Wood or the Deep Woods. So I carry on along my path, and on the way I find a battered book. I'm a bit wary, but I approach it and open it, only to be sucked into the Hundred Acre Wood, but it's been completely abandoned. In order to restore the Hundred Acre Wood, I need to read a book with yellow on the cover. So for that, I'm desperate to read The Train to Impossible Places by P.G. Bell. This sounds so whimsical and wonderful. So this is about a girl called Susie who hears strange noises coming from her basement one night and wanders downstairs to find a train, but no ordinary train, this is a magical delivery train. So she gets whisked aboard and her life is completely turned upside down when she's tasked with delivering a cursed package to an evil sorceress. However, this package begs her not to be delivered and as she struggles with this, she discovers that she might be the only one who can save the world of impossible places. It sounds utterly delightful. Look at those end pages. Bananas. But even more magnificent than the end pages is the cover underneath. I mean... Have you ever seen a book more beautiful? The only thing I think that can even come close to this is the naked hardcover of, Wonder of Nevermore and Wondersmith, but I mean, this is absolutely magnificent. When I finish that, the characters will be restored and I'll be returned to my normal world. Then I have the choice of heading towards the Brody Rail or Orion Found. I carry on along the path and I'm now completely surrounded by buildings. I don't think much of it until I reach a chasm that I can only cross by using the Brolly Rail, except I don't have a Brolly. At a nearby hotel, a young girl offers me her Brolly, but she's not going to trade easily. In order to gain the brolly, I have to read a book featuring transportation or that has transportation on the cover. So for this, I would really like to read Alistair Grimm's Auditorium by Gregory Venaro. This is illustrated by Chris Mould, who does Matt Haig's illustrations, and just, I love him. Alistair Grimm's Auditorium is his house, but it flies, so I'm going to say that that's transportation, because it can move. So this is about a 12-year-old orphan called Grub, who lives in a workhouse, and one day he tries to escape by hiding in amongst the things of Alistair Grimm, this very eccentric inventor type person. Then he is whisked away to Alistair Grimm's auditorium, where he becomes his apprentice. And for a while everything is going well, he's found a new family, he's learning a trade, but then the evil Prince Nightshade threatens to destroy everything that he holds dear, and he has to go on a quest to help save his world and his new family. So this on the back has been described as ideal for kids who loved Harry Potter and Percy Jackson. I think I'm gonna love this, it sounds really quirky and I love the found family trope, it's probably my favourite, I think it's one of the reasons that I love Nevermore so much, so I think I'm really going to enjoy this one. Having done that, the girl agrees to give me her brolly and I catch the brolly rail all the way to the bookkeeper's stronghold. So we're almost there, we're now outside the gates of the bookkeeper's stronghold, but the witch is still there, trapping everyone inside and keeping anyone else from coming in. In order to defeat her, you have to read the next book in a series. I have quite a few options for this because in fact, every book so far on my TBR has a sequel that I need to read, so I could read the next Alistair Grimm book, I could read the next Fairyland book, I could read the next Pages and Co book, but what I'm intending to read is the next Train to Impossible Places book called The Great Brain Robbery, and I do not know what this one is about because I still haven't opened my arc, and I don't really want to know what it's about until I've read the first book. By the way, there's a sequel, that's pretty much all I can tell you. Once I've read that, I'm able to penetrate its defences, enter the stronghold, and with all of the knowledge that I've acquired over the course of my quest, I can defeat the witch. I've lifted the curse, I've freed the people of the bookkeeper's stronghold, and I have saved the people of the land of make believe -thon and res helped restore their imaginations. At which time, I get to meet Gav the bookkeeper, who thanks me for saving his world. You're welcome, Gav. So that is my TBR for the believe -thon. I would really recommend checking out Gavin's announcement video for more information on how this all works because it is such an incredibly wonderful idea. Although I'm terrible at them, I love these like quest-inspired 
readathons. I think that they're so much fun. There's also a Believeathon compendium, which contains absolutely everything you could possibly need to know about the Believeathon. It contains your map, it contains your prompts, it contains some recommendations. It is a whole font of information about this readathon. You could buy a physical copy from Amazon, I'm not sure if you still can, but Gavin's also created a Google Drive with everything that you need and the, a soft copy of the compendium is in there, so that's what I've been using. You can also check out the Believeathon Twitter, he's made a thread that also involves all the prompts, has all the recommendations, so you don't even need to use the compendium really, you can just refer to that Twitter thread, although I would recommend going through the compendium because it is so beautifully designed. And also on Twitter you can see all the prompts but like it's really special to see them with the story as well. Then I've also done a Believe It On Recommendations video myself, it's some of my favourite middle grade books and I've just applied them to the relevant Believe It On prompts. So if you are still struggling with choosing your TBR I'd recommend checking that out. Let me know down in the comments if you'll be joining me on this quest, what you'll be reading, or just what you think of the books that I've mentioned. I am so excited about all of these, I can't remember the last time that I was this excited about a readathon. Like, I love the owls as an experience, but my TBR for the owls didn't excite me anywhere near as much my TBR for this excites me. It's just, it's gonna be a magical two weeks. So thank you very much for watching. Once again, if you did enjoy this, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Goodreads. My links to all of those are in the description, and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye! My life is grounded in a